I have been working in construction for over 20 years. Some lessons have been learned over the time and I hope that anything I have to share with you from my past helps you with your future. The first one, and this is to me, it was the one that took me a while to understand because I was young. As I started in construction, I was a cocky son of a bitch. I honestly thought I knew everything. Nobody can tap me nothing. All these old guys are just here wasting my time and they're too fucking slow for me to be around them. And I will never take ownership of any of my mistakes because I was perfect. I thought that that was the way that people was going to respect me. That was a hard pill to swallow when you find out how much of a dumbass you are when you're just starting and you don't know nothing. You might be quicker than those old guys, but they will smoke circles around you. These older guys started calming me down over the years to show me that we have two ears and one mouth for a reason. You need to listen more and talk less. The experience is now within your brain in some people. People brain have information that you need, information that are gonna help you move towards the direction that you want. I became responsible just by following their lead. I became not a workaholic, but I became very good at what I do. So I just wanted to be doing it all the time because of what they taught me. I learned to love what I do because I was willing to listen and take that knowledge from all those who have gone through it before. Being cocky didn't got me, but getting fired all the time. I used to get fired every Friday. I couldn't take bullshit from the bosses or I couldn't take bullshit from people around me. That's, that was not the right thing. And for those who I offended in the past, I'm sorry. I was young. I hope you understand and you have said my apology. Managing your money when you start actually working properly on trades. One of the biggest issues is as a construction guys, and this is per personal experience. I'm not speaking about you, but I am talking directly to you. I started making really shitty money when I started. Couple years passed, the money got a little better. And for everybody who I met on site, most of them didn't come from money, okay? Most of the people that I worked with at the beginning, we all came from either low middle class or poor. We, we wanted the shiny objects, you know? It's a guy that shows up in a brand new truck and you're like, how the hell can he afford that? You need to learn how to manage your money. You need to know what's in your future and what it is that you're looking for as you start getting older. You might start in the trade at 16, you could start it at 25. For both of you, it's the same thing. You gotta figure out what your bills are. You gotta know exactly how much you can save with that job or if it's another trade that will pay you more to do something similar to what you're doing right now. As you start making the money and you become a little more experienced, also the side jobs start coming into your life because now you know more people in the same trade or in other trades who are doing way bigger things than you are. You start getting phone calls about, can you help me on this project? Can you help me on this house? Can you help me with my friend? Then you start making money on top of your job. Make sure that you're not wasting this money. And this is just for pure experience. You know how much money I blew on dumb shit that right now I can't even remember what it was. Don't make that mistake. Make sure that you're putting this money to work. Make sure that the money's working as hard as you are. So when you reach my age, you could be pretty well set. Construction is not about all the money that you make. You also get taxed the most when it comes down to your overtime. So he said, overtime worth it only if it's necessary. I will prefer to do side jobs because that's money that I got to claim as a 1099 and allow me to open my first business, to start learning about taxes. Do you know what you can write off from your paycheck? Do you know that your work clothes could be write off? Your fuel, your mileage, you get to choose one of those. If you have an office in your home, you can write off the square footage that you use from that house. You gotta become smart with your money. It's not about how much you make, it's about how much you actually get to keep. Plan it correctly so where eventually you can start investing this money and make every single dollar work for you rather than you working for the dollars. Make sure that your money, as I call them my little soldiers, are fighting for me. Then they're making money for me. I don't live a lavish life, not because I can't. It's because it's not worth it. It's not worth having 10 vacations a year just because I can have it. I much rather work right now, save, invest, and make all the right moves with my money. So when I do actually want to retire, which for all you guys out there on trades, we don't believe in retirement. We're always going to be doing something. We're used to waking up at four in the morning and not going to bed until 11 o'clock at night. But at least we find something easier to do that it still keeps us entertained. Trades people, we beat our asses every day on the field. We put some stress into our bodies and we also put stress into our families. If you don't put that money to work, that will be your destiny until the last day you're in this earth. Make sure you start planning your cash, plan your money, plan your plan ahead of you. Don't think about today, start thinking about tomorrow and how you wanna make that happen when you can't work anymore. 
when your knees are a little messed up and when your back is a little screwed up. We are not like corporate America where we are relying on our 401k that somebody's maxing out or, you know, how many hours we're on the ACs. Make the money and make sure you're investing yourself. Invest not only on your education for what you do, invest for the future so where you're not stuck in that job forever. As you start moving along in the trade and you're choosing to go into the ownership of a company because you're tired to working for the man, finding, maintaining for longevity of clients. Finding a client for the most part is the hardest thing you're going to do. The first ones might not be so hard, but as you want to grow as a company or as a person, it's going to become a lot harder to do. Clients are not going to be around the corner. Your community is not going to know who you are. You're just going to know those clients and give you the random work here and there. So your company becomes a side job company. You won't be able to grow without exposure, without you being able to maintain these clients, not only because you give them a good job, because you give them a good service. People look for us because they can do the jobs we do. They look for us because we bring something to the table that themselves cannot bring into the table or don't have the time to do. It's nothing different than going to a restaurant. You go eat in a restaurant because you don't get to wash the dishes. You don't get to make the kitchen messy. You only get to show up and pay the bill. When a server doesn't treat you right, you don't want to go back. It had nothing to do with the restaurant owner or the food. It was represented by that one person who did something wrong to you. Remember, we're there to serve. They are our clients. Look at their jobs as if they were your own. They will notice when you take extra care of them. They will notice when you answer that phone. Now, if you're starting a business and you're giving me the shit that you don't answer the phone because you're too fucking busy, you're just too fucking lazy. The work for us comes from the phone. It doesn't come from the neighbor. Most of the time, it does not come from the neighbor where we are working. Over time, it might, but it doesn't start there. And our reputation is everything. A lot of our work is word of mouth, at least for me. If I wasn't working right for the first client, I don't think I would, I would have got the second client. Things change as you progress in construction or ownership. But just make sure that you are the best at what you do and that everybody that works underneath you has the same idea of treating the client as if they were themselves. They want encouragement from us of what it is that we do and how we're going to do it. Don't do the use Peter to pay Paul. Your clients will notice that you're spending their money into something else because you couldn't manage your money correctly or because somebody else is not paying you. I'm on fault for that as well. It happens to all of us as we're expanding. Cash will be more needed. If you're living a lavish life, you will never have enough money to make the company grow. All those things go together just for the simple fact that you need money to hire people and you need people to do more jobs. You want to make more money, you need more people. Those things will make you be different from others. A misunderstanding of why people get into business. Everybody says, I go into business because I want to make the money. Don't get me wrong, the money's good. It's great. But... I'm a married man. I have children. I make the money for them. The business in general only serves my ego. I'm in business to serve my ego and my ego fits my family. The money stops being a problem when you just want to be recognized. And this is a mistake I made. I used to put my family on third or fourth sometimes. It used to be my business, my clients, where I live, and my family. That was a huge mistake on my part. My family is first now. I had to understand that I was in business for my ego. And I started to forget those who love me and made the same sacrifice as I did as I was out on the jobs 24 seven. I would have answered my phone at all times. As I'm trying to teach my kids to get off the phone, I'm in the phone. I used to bring the problems for work into the house. Why? Because my ego was hurt and I needed to expose everybody for it. That's not a great place to be. Being in business is having a daycare. You're gonna get mad at you guys. You're gonna be mad at your clients. But like I said, don't mix your feelings with the client. They don't care about your feelings, neither than they expect you to care about theirs. They expect you to care about their job. So make sure that as you're working in your business, you don't forget the most important part, which is your family. They depend on you but they can depend on you if you're never around. You gotta be there for them. They are watching. If you have children, they are watching you. They wanna be like you. They just won't say it because you're not there for them to say it. Yes, business and clients are important, but they gotta have boundaries. Your client needs to understand your boundaries. 
You need to understand your client's boundaries. Business is a tough place to be. It's never easy. It's always hard. It doesn't get easy because that it becomes easier than you move into next episodes of that business. Business is always changing. It's always moving. The economy is moving with it. You move with what decisions by others are made. All you get, all you got in you is grinding. Keep grinding. Forget about your ego. Put those people in place that need to be in the place where they're at and keep moving forward. Bitching ain't going to help you. Complaining ain't going to help you. And yes, karma is a bitch. Keep doing what you're doing and you will pay the consequences eventually. It might not be now, but you will pay him eventually. I hope some of my past lessons are able to help you in some way. If you have any questions, leave a comment, subscribe, and I hope to see you guys in the field.